Welcome back to this edition of Mox News. This week, our Mox shake up things with the event Sex in the Dark. Our Mox basketball team partners with the American Cancer Society to shoot baskets for a cause. And Wednesday, you may have gotten a late night text that sent your heart racing. Stay tuned to see why. I'm Tadeja Patterson. And I'm Charlize Lundy, and your news starts now. UTC turned the lights off this week in a talk about sex and relationships. Students flocked out this Wednesday to RHA's Sex in the Dark, an annual event where students can learn about safe sex practices. The event allows students to ask questions about any topics related to sex and get answers from a panel of sexperts. Free condoms, lube, food, and candy were available to all who came. And the first 100 attendants received a free t-shirt Brooke Goodson, Vice President of RHA, was happy to spread the knowledge to the campus. So Tennessee is known for having really bad sex education policies and very restrictive policies. And so a lot of kids come to campus not knowing much about sex. So we just wanted them to have a safe space where they can, you know, have healthy discussions with their friends, with people, with the panelists, with sex experts. Just educate yourselves. You know, sex is not a bad word. We're here to empower people. You can see pumpkins flying through the air here at UTC. STEM students constructed a catapult and launched pumpkins across Chamberlain Field. The event was delayed from Halloween because of the rain. This week, the first launch resulted in the pumpkin blasting straight above into the sky and then landed between the trucks that hauled the catapult in. But after a few corrections, the pumpkins went the distance and splattered on the field. Some plastic pumpkins contain candy, making clean up a lot easier. A more serious event took place later in the week across our camp. The TAPS project returned to UTC to honor and remember those who served. Trumpet players from across the area joined together for the performance, starting near Macaulay Avenue, then winding its way across campus until reaching the destination of the power seat at Chamberlain Field. It's a powerful way to honor our vets. The UTC basketball team hit a slam dunk against cancer this week. Arthur Deja Patterson has the story. Shooting down cancer was held on Wednesday, November 6th. Head coach Lamont Paris donated money to the American Cancer Society with each shot taken during the event. Students in attendance helped with the donations and showed off their hoop skills. Paris donated $5 for each free throw taken and $50 for each half court shot. Overall, the event raised $2,033. It is now time for weather. Jeremiah, how are things looking for next week? Thanks, anchors. Today, expect partly cloudy skies with a high of 52 and a low of 31. Saturday, expect a high of 58 and a low of 36. And Sunday, expect more of the same with a high of 65 and a low of 39. 
Monday, expect mostly cloudy skies with a high of 64 and a low of 33. And kicking off Tuesday, expect some snow showers with a high of 36 and a low of 19. That's it for weather. I'm Jeremiah. Back to the news desk. On Thursday, rapper Kanye West announced that he plans to move all manufacturing of his shoe brand, Yeezy, to the U.S. The plan is to move headquarters to Cody, Wyoming, in order to make environmental sustainable shoes using hemp and cotton. His announcement was made at the Fast Company's Innovation Festival, where he also announced his plans to run for president in 2024. People at the festival were not sure if he was serious, according to West. It is not a joke. It has been announced that the name of the 2020 Met Gala theme will be About Time, Fashion and Duration. Celebrities will have the chance to show off styles from the 1870s and show how fashion has changed from then to now. There will also be a feature section on the future of fashion. The benefit will happen on May 4th, 2020, and an exhibit will be open to the public from May 7th to September 7th, 2020. The Mox football team suffered a crushing defeat at home. Thanks, guys. The Mox had a tough loss against Furman Saturday at Finley Stadium. The Chattanooga Mox football team had a big test this week in versus ranked opponent the Furman Paladins. This game will put Furman in the driver's seat in the SoCon if the Mox lost. The Mox started out hot with two back-to-back -back turnovers with a fumble and a pick that resulted in a 9-0 lead by the Mox. Chattanooga established a dominant run game in the first half with two huge runs by Alim Ford that set the pace for the offense. This game put Ford over the 1,000-yard rushing mark on the season and became the 13th Mox to do so. Furman weathered the storm on offense with a change at quarterback and their defense stepped up big in the second half. The Mocs' comeback fell short at the end and are now 3-2 and two in the SoCon and 4-5 and five overall. The Mocs will play Sanford this Saturday at 3 on the road. The Chattanooga women's basketball team fell to the Belmont Bears by a score of 63-50 in their season opener. Belmont had 11-1 run in the fourth quarter that was too much for the Lady Mocs to overcome. The Mocs were 19 for 56 from the field, and Lakeland Boyd led the team with 21 points. The Lady Mocs will return home to play Hampton in a doubleheader with the men's team. Tip-off is at 2 p.m. The Chattanooga men's basketball team dropped their first regular season game to Eastern Kentucky with a cold shooting night. The Mocs had a rough shooting night in the second half and lost by a score of 79 to 68. Matt Ryan scored 15 points with a career-high 8 rebounds. The Mocs travel back home and will face long-time rival Tennessee State. Tip-off is at 4.30 p.m. and will begin immediately after the Lady Mocs game. In what people are calling the game of the century, the number two ranked LSU Tigers will face number three ranked Alabama. Both teams were undefeated heading into the matchup in Tuscaloosa, and the game will have huge implications in the SEC and the college football playoffs. President Donald Trump is set to make an appearance at the game. Kickoff is at 3.30 Eastern Time and can be watched on CBS. I'm Bailey Biddle with Mox News. Have a good afternoon. Wednesday, you may have received a text message that may have caused some confusion or some of you alarm. Well, it turns out all four major phone carriers in the United States sent our text messages from Valentine's Day, February 14th. People have shared their experience after receiving text messages from ex-partners and lost loved ones and friends. As of now, it is unclear why this happened, but many faced awkward conversations that they thought they left in their past. That does it for this edition of Mox News. Thank you for joining us. Make sure to check out our website at moxnews.com to continue following the news throughout the week. And while you are there, make sure to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Have a great weekend from all of us here at Mox News.